Here's what happens after the body dies. A lot of the videos you've seen me do, I talk about what happens before someone dies. This is going to be about what happens to the body and what we do after the body dies. So there are different stages and I'm going to talk about what the body does, what the body goes through, what happens, what it looks like at all the different stages after death. So immediately after someone dies, so the first minute of their death to around an hour to an hour and a half, what is happening in the body? What can you expect through the body changing? And what's the hospice company going to be doing? And what are you supposed to be doing? So you suspect your loved one has died. You likely are going to be alone. You're not going to be with the hospice company. Sometimes we catch it where the hospice nurse is there, but most of the time the family is the one who notices their loved one has died. You call the hospice company and then the hospice company can come out and declare your loved one gone or dead. How we do that is we usually just listen to the heartbeat for two minutes. And if we don't hear a heartbeat for two minutes, we don't, we don't see their chest rising and falling, we can declare them dead. So what is going to be happening in that first hour after death? What's your loved one going to look like? The first thing you're going to notice is the body can fully relax. So you may notice urine. You may notice they've had a bowel movement. You may notice fluid coming out of their nose, out of their mouth. Now the fluid out of their nose, out of their mouth does not usually happen, but I like to mention it because it can. And yes, not everyone will urinate and have a bowel movement at the end of life when they, right when they die, but some people will. And that is literally because everything is <sighs> relaxing. And you might even hear that last kind of sigh. <sighs> now again, not always, but sometimes. So first thing, everything is gonna relax. That includes their eyes could open. Bing. They might not, but they could because it takes muscles to close the, close the eyes. All those muscles are now relaxed. So their eyes might open. Their mouth is likely already open. So everything's open and relaxed. This is also a reason why sometimes people say like, my mom looked younger after she died or like her skin seemed like waxy or almost glassy. This is because everything is relaxing. This also happens because all the blood is no longer circulating. So all the natural redness of the skin disappears. And this is combined with the shifting of fluids in tone. It can almost appear like the wrinkles disappear. Now, again, this doesn't happen with everybody, but there are some, sometimes it happens like profoundly and people are like, whoa, <laughs> my loved one looks like they just got 20 years younger that first hour after death. Again, in this first hour after death, a lot of times people will change in color. So they'll look a lot more gray or a lot more pale. This is again, because there's not oxygenated blood going through the body. There's not blood going through the body at all. And everything's actually starting to settle in the back of the person's body. It's basically just following gravity. Like I said before, their eyes may be open. They also can get glossy. They also can get cloudy and they also can change color. This is because there's a lack of tear production. There's a drying of a cornea and there's different chemicals happening in the eye that can make it change color. Again, not always, but sometimes. This is also a time when you may start seeing that their lips look a little purple or blue. Fingertips, little purple or blue. Nail beds, purple or blue. This is all due to circulation stopping. Something that might freak you out, doesn't always happen, but it can, are small little twitches of the body arm twitching, finger twitching, feet twitching. This is all just residual nerve and muscle activity that is like basically kind of um, slowly stopping over you know, the first moments to carry on to like the next hour of death. That can just be the body almost like settling in on itself. To me, it's really important to know these subtle changes or maybe not so subtle changes because it can feel like a scary, a sad time. And knowing what to expect, knowing what's normal, knowing why things are happening can just slightly take the sting away. So the first few hours of death now. So now you've passed the hour, hour and a half mark and you're getting into like the two hours to five hours mark, right? Your loved one could still potentially be in your home. Now, not everyone will. Some people, once the person dies, they can call the mortuary. The mortuary will pick them up within 30 minutes and they don't see these things. But some people want their loved one in the home longer so everyone has a chance to say goodbye. And sometimes, particularly in bigger cities like Los Angeles, we have 
sometimes like a two hour, three hour wait period until the mortuary can come. So some people will see these changes or let's say your loved one dies in the middle of the night. You go check on them in the morning. They've already been gone for the past five hours. So you're going to see these changes. Now this next part of the video is going to be about what, what their body will look like, the changes that are happening in the few hours after death. And these are uh, pretty predictable, but fascinating the body cooling. The person's body is definitely going to start to be cool at this time. Your body temperature basically drops, 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 drops. It takes a few hours, but it eventually will get to room temperature, which will make the body feel cool. So technically the body usually drops about a degree Fahrenheit or a degree and a half Fahrenheit per hour in the first few hours. And then eventually the body is going to get to like whatever the temperature is in the room, but it will feel cool. Also, you're going to notice the cooling feeling mostly at first in the hands and feet, the extremities, the nose, because those things are, are really not getting circulation. So they're going to be cold or cooler even before the person dies. We have not gotten to rigor mortis yet. Rigor mortis is the, the one that everyone talks about where the body feels stiff. That has not happened yet. And if it has started to, it hasn't fully taken over the full body yet. The next thing that starts happening is the blood settling. This is what I was talking about earlier when I said the blood starts settling towards gravity, right? So the blood starts pooling or settling towards the back of the person's body. So a lot of times if you rolled that person over, you will even see that it's a little darker or a little bluer in the back of their body. And that's because the blood is settling. It's falling towards gravity. This is actually one way that forensic investigators can tell how long ago someone died. They'll look at the blood pooling. There's different things they can look at to see, okay, blood pooling has started. So that means they've been dead for X amount of time. And you usually start seeing it in the buttocks and the legs and the back. Rigor mortis. This is the one that everyone knows, right? The body getting stiff, the hands getting stiff, the whole body feeling like um, it can't move. And the reality is it really can't. It's very difficult once rigor mortis sets in to do anything to move the body, right? I have seen people have rigor mortis pretty quickly after death, and I've seen some people not. Generally speaking, it happens a couple hours to, you know, five hours after death, it'll fully set in. And why is this happening? I'm actually gonna read this because I don't wanna mess this up. After death, the body stops producing ATP, the molecule that muscles need to relax. Without ATP, muscles become rigid. There you go. And this usually starts happening between two to six hours. So you'll see it in the smaller muscles first, it says, which I notice this very often, in the eyelids, the jaw, and the neck. Hence why it's very hard to close someone's mouth once they've died. One, gravity, all the muscles are relaxed, and then that also tightens. So it's hard to get that, that jaw up and it's hard to get the eyes closed as well. You can do it, but it can be difficult. Then it spreads to the arms, then the legs, and then the torso. So it takes about six, uh, two to six hours. Again, I want to read this so I could get it. I get it exactly right. It says rigor mortis can make it feel like the body is locked, but it's only temporary. It typically peaks around 12 hours and then gradually fades within 24 to 48 hours, which I will get into. And this is because the tissues start breaking down. And then again, in this time, you still may be able to notice the different little twitches, little movements that can still be happening. If your loved one is still in your house during this time, it's totally fine. But I think it's important to know the changes. It can make people upset if you don't know that rigor mortis might happen or there might be the pooling of the blood. They're gonna get more cool. They're probably gonna look less and less like your loved one, right? But hospice will be there to help you. We can also help you clean the body at this time. Again, like I said, they may have urinated, they may have had a bowel movement. I always offer to clean the patient if I think they need it, but I will say the body is particularly heavy at this time. So we usually will need to ask for help from a family member. Some family members are comfortable doing it, some are not, and I totally understand. And if you're not, I usually say, I totally understand, and I'm going to do the best I can by myself to clean your loved one. But the idea of like turning someone over and fully being able to change them will basically be pretty impossible to do with just one person. So I always just do the best I can. And if a family is willing to help me, then we can fully do it. Okay, six to 12 hours after they have died. Your loved one can still be with you. Now, depending on your state, 
right? Most of the time, you guys don't want your loved one in your home for six to 12 hours. But sometimes, and for religious reasons, people do, and that is okay. It does vary from state to state legally how long you're allowed to have your loved one who has died in your home. So make sure your hospice company should know the state regulations, but each state is different. Okay, so during this like six to 12 hour period, again, rigor mortis has fully set in, meaning they're going to be very stiff and it's gonna be very difficult to move whatever, wherever they were. If, they're, if their arms were like this, they're gonna stay like this, at least for that period of time, because rigor mortis is fully set in. If they're on their stomach, they'll stay like that. Their mouth's gonna likely be open, their eyes are gonna be open, they're gonna be cool to touch, and uh, oftentimes blue in the lips and maybe in the fingers and toes. These last couple of phases, I wanna kind of talk in combination with each other. You know, the first 24 to 48 hours, they are likely going to be in the mortuary by this time. But just so you know what happens there, this is when the rigor mortis starts settling. Their body starts consuming tissues and it starts relaxing again. So it's not going to be this stiff body anymore. The rigor mortis does start settling out. And let's, let's learn why this happens. Let's learn together. Muscles are beginning to break down as enzymes from cells themselves start digesting tissue. This is called autolysis. And this is why the, the rigor mortis reverses. Now, within the first 24 to 48 hours, decomposition can start. However, it does decrease, like it's much, much slower if the body is cooled. So a lot of times in mortuaries, they will be placed in a freezer or a place that's cooler. So the, the decomposition of the body slows down, but it does start happening within 24 to 48 hours. And this happens because it says here, bacteria in the gut starts breaking down tissues, producing gases and subtle odors, right? So this is why things start breaking down within 24 to 48 hours. The body will look a little different. It can look a little more blotchy, a little more mottled, like I said before. So there could be like purple spots and blue spots and the, the skin is just a little more blotchy. And again, this is because the breakdown of red blood cells and pooling of the blood vessels combined with enzyme activity of the dying cells. So things are shifting, things are breaking down. And again, all of this is slowed down a lot if your loved one's body is at a mortuary, usually in a freezer, and then it'll eventually start the embalming, which the embalming really slows down a lot of this stuff. But before the embalming starts, which is a whole different video, this is what's happening to the body as it shuts down. So beyond the first two days, the body is usually in the mortuary and it could be even embalmed by now. But let's say it's not. Now, if it's in a freezer, it will slow this process down. But generally speaking, one to two days after the body has died or beyond that, this is when decomposition continues. And basically, if I'm reading here, it says organs and tissue slowly break down, bacterial activity increases. And then again, it says embalming or re refrigeration occurs. This process will slow down dramatically. So usually because your loved ones on hospice, they are already in the mortuary, they are already refrigerated, or even the, the embalming has started. Generally speaking, I think it's important that we know all facets of life and death when it comes to this journey, right? So you've learned about what it's going to look like when your person's getting close to the end of life. This video can help you understand what the body is doing after your loved one dies. You're generally going to be with them anywhere from you know, an hour to maybe up to a day with your loved one after they've died. And knowing the subtle changes I think is important. So the subtle changes would be the changes in skin color, right? They're gonna be a little more pale, maybe a little more blue or purplish around the lips, the fingers, their eyes may be open and glossy, their mouth may be open. They're gonna be pooling, the blood's gonna be pooling in the back. So their back might look a little more blue. The back of their legs might look a little more blue and they may eventually start stiffening up. All very normal. The little twitches you might see, all very normal. Again, I just want to normalize. All of this is normal. You can still have all the sadness, all of the overwhelm, but I do think learning about it, understanding why it's all happening will help decrease the fear so you can really be present and be with your loved one. <laughs>